you know, I served in the legislature in the assembly in the 90s. I served three terms, and I had the distinction among my Republican colleagues uh, of never voting for a tax increase. I'm the only Republican in this race who never voted to raise taxes. I already shared with you uh, that what I want to do regarding this magnet that we have for bringing people over the border so more and more of our, use more and more of our tax dollars for benefits. Uh, something else that I think we should look at is what the governor talked about when he first got here. Blowing up boxes. I think we need to look at consolidating agencies for efficiencies and for uh, cost-cutting features and getting rid of the redundant agencies. And the other thing I would do that would go a long way is I would bring transparency to the budget process. Today, we just had a 100-day late budget. The first bill I will introduce is that when there's a late budget, I would like to see the old budget become the new budget. The previous year's budget becomes the new budget until they pass a budget. And then they would fund it on a per diem, a pro rata basis. So we don't go without a budget and keep people hanging out to dry. But I think we ought to have the budget discussed and don't let people out of the Capitol to go campaign and do anything. Not the big five. We should be seeing that budget being discussed on, as a committee on the whole. 80 members of the Assembly and 40 members of the Senate should be doing it in public on the floor. They should be negotiating in public. Make it transparent so you can see what's going on. And you don't find a big surprise after 100 days. This is what they decided to do. And they'll be back within months to try it again because they failed. That's clever, Ted. <laughs> Blame Dave Cox for you taking per diem. I never took per diem. I turned down an excess of $100,000 in per diem. I lived 30 some miles away from the Capitol. And you know what? It was wrong to take it, and it's wrong for you to take it. It's not your money to give to charity. It's their money. They can give their money to the charity of their choice. That is the bottom line. And I do respect, I like Ted, but that is a wrong position. This per diem thing is the biggest scheme that legislators pull off on us. Uh, what is it? $143 a day? I think it's like $143 a day taxes them. No, I think tax it's Tax-free. Seven days a week. And they get it seven days a week. As long as the legislature doesn't go more than three days without a year. So they, they adjourn on Thursdays, they come back on Mondays, and they've got per diem all through the weekend as well. It is a scam. I just came back from Southern California. I was down there on, pers on business. Guess what? I, I'm not allowed to spend more than $124 a night on a hotel. And I've got to turn in that receipt to get reimbursements. If I'm elected, I'm changing the scam on per diem in the Capitol. This is ridiculous. I support Prop 13. In fact, you looked at my little uh, handout here. In fact, don't forget to take one because I got here late. Uh, you'll see Paul Gann. I started out as a political activist helping Paul Gann pass Prop 13, walking around my neighborhood with my parents trying to collect signatures. Uh, we need Prop 13. I've got friends all over the, the country that tell me they wish they had it in their states. I wish we could extend it more. I wish we could open it up for folks that are buying new houses uh, rather than only us that uh, are, have it now and, and not give it to others. I would like to give it to more people. I love giving people freedom to buy and sell, to earn, and to start businesses. So I'm a strong supporter of Prop 13. Uh, I, I support, you know, imagine this, take redistricting out of the hands of the politicians. What a novel approach. And I support that. We've done that through prop, uh, whatever it was a while ago. We have it now. We have a, it's probably not the perfect sy system, but it certainly is good to take it away from the legislature. That's called a conflict of interest when they do it. I also support adding the congressionals in. And I'll hearken back to the 2000, when was it, when did we last report? The 2002 redistricting. Um, if we would have had the congressional, if we would have done a fair congressional reapportionment, that would have helped us get closer to a majority in the state legislature. But unfortunately, and once again, the Republicans are too often times, of which I am one, they have all these schemes that's going to get them to power. The Bush White House did not want us to fairly district in the congressionals out here. 
in 2002 because they wanted to hold the Congress for all the good things they were going to do. That worked well. Uh, so I do, <laughs> I, I do indeed support putting the congressionals in this. We need to. Let's have fair districts. It's tough enough in California. We need fair districts. Well, the way to increase jobs in California is to give the people who invest their money into establishing businesses belief in the fact that they can make a profit, that they can operate a business in this state. Unfortunately, we've not done a very good job of that. So the biggest thing that we can do as policymakers is to take that helping hand of government, so-called, off of the backs of people who are willing to invest their money in starting businesses. So when you're talking regulation, regulatory reform, when you're talking about Prop 23, AB 32. AB 32 is why we have businesses leaving again. And we've got to stop that bleed. We have the wrong people leaving and the wrong people moving in. We need people who can robust our economy to fill our coffers at the local level, at the state level, so that everyone has a better life. So that's what I would be working towards, is to roll back this regulatory environment, give business Men and women believe that they can make it in California. Very big, big role. Uh, what I believe a conservative is, is someone who believes in the free market, individual responsibility, and believes that government that governs least governs best. Uh, and we should not do for people what they can do for themselves. And as a policymaker, a conservative should never extend the hand, the power, the reach of government to exceed anything that other than what is articulated in the Constitution. A conservative believes in a constitutional form of government. That is what conservatism is all about. Here's some of the things I want to see. I worked on it when I was in the assembly. I would like to get rid of prevailing wage requirements people to do government jobs. I'd like to open that up to the private sector so they could be a, a competitive bidder and not have to meet these prevailing wage requirements where the price of the job goes up so much that the, uh, it, it's just it's bad for taxpayers. Well, I think you can hear tonight, I have a lot of passion, I have a lot of fire. Uh, I am a blessed person. I am grateful for the life that I've been able to live. But my life wasn't always a nice life that it is today. I'm a unique Republican. I was a welfare mom. And my defining moment was when a guy by the name of Ronald Reagan became governor of this state. And in a few months, he cut my benefits. I didn't like him very much then, but I love him today because it was conservative policy, constitutional policy, and a governor's tough love that took me from the poorhouse to the state house where I was able to apply all those things I had learned coming off the welfare line, starting a business, raising a family, that I would live in real life, and I brought that to the state assembly. I want to go back and do it again. It is time for freedom fighters. I feel like I'm a Green Beret. I was very, very effective when I served in Sacramento. It's one thing to say I introduced this bill, I introduced that bill, but you know what? Most of the Republican bills fail because they don't have the numbers to pass them. I didn't have the numbers to pass them, but I still passed great conservative legislation because I was effective. I was effective at crossing the aisle and getting the Democrats to come over and join me and not giving up principle. It's one thing to cross and come over and say I'm going to go up on taxes. I never did that. I stood strong. And you know what? You need people that are strong today for you. And it's time that we have someone like me serving in Sacramento. And in this race, the, the answer for this race, the best man for this race, in my mind, is the only woman on the ballot. And that's me. And I would be honored to have your vote. Thank you very much.